Welcome to a very public, uh, very special public exposure. I'm Stan Emmert. It's been about so four or five months ago the Seattle schools called and said there was a young man named Jeffrey Lee Parson who is about, was about to plead guilty to a federal crime uh, involving a computer virus. And uh, what Jeffrey wanted to do was, even before his sentencing, is he wanted to tape a show about, or he wanted to tape some information about how young people his age, who was 17 at the time, how young people should not get involved in any kind of a, of, of a kind of activity that he did. Because what ended up happening is that as we speak today, he is in federal prison. So with that, if, if we're ready to go to the tape, if I can just get a sign from the booth, we're ready to go. Let's go right now to the interview with Jeffrey Parson. Typical teen engrossed in his computer turned into a federal felon. Jeffrey Parson, right here on Public Exposure. I'm Stan Emmert, and uh, Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm going to have a picture of you at age 18 in 2003 yeah. uh, that we're going to put up on the screen here in just a minute. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I would describe myself as a typical teen. Um, I understand there really is no typical teen, but as far as it goes, I don't do anything abnormal that a typical teen would do. I used to just hang out with friends, you know, sit on the computer, talk to my friends, go, go to, to school. Go to school, go to movies. Yeah, I mean, as far as a typical teen goes, that's how I describe myself. Uh, you uh, lived all your life in, in Minnesota, and yep. uh, as of late in any event, Hopkins, Minnesota. Yep. You got a, got a picture of the town square from your hometown. Looks like yep. something out of Back to the Future, actually. <laughs> uh, and all, and uh, uh, just tell us a little bit about your town. Oh, my town, it's small, but it still has about 17,000 people. Um, it's almost like everybody knows each other, but they don't. Um, Pretty much everything is within walking distance, and that's about it. Well, now I want to go to uh, late August of 2003 in an mm -hmm. article from the Seattle Times newspaper. The headline reads, Minnesota teen charged here in internet attack, and particularly Symantec Corporation uh, that uh, many of us know it's a leading antivirus vendor said that the worm that you helped to get involved with and its variants infected more than 500,000 computers worldwide. Experts consider it one of the worst outbreaks of the year. Tell us about that. Well, the, the difference is is the original versus my variant. Um, the, original, the original was the blaster. The original was the blaster and that that's the one they're mainly talking about. Um, and it's very unclear that uh, people don't seem to understand that there's different variants and the original spread with just a lot farther than mine did and mine they can they, they say about I think they know of like over a thousand but not much more than that and uh, over a thousand computers were impacted yeah. by your variant and that's how much I think they can prove um, I actually have no idea the difference is is mine didn't spread as far and mine was modified just a little bit. What was yours? Mine it's it's called multiple different things. Uh, I think it's blaster B or somewhere else it's blaster C and and I don't know, it's just called so many different things, that's one of the confusions. I mean it's unclear, like people can't separate between other variants, my variant or the original. So I mean, physically, what did you do? You you received the, the blaster virus, and then you did something with it. Yeah, I, I modified it a little bit. I changed some of the strings in there, changed the executable name, and I, I added a backdoor. And that backdoor would allow me to access the computer remotely from my computer. Mm -hmm. and, and why did you want to do that? Uh, so I could use their computer for file sharing and send out files from their computer. And the thing about that is it only infected a, a certain number of computers because after there's different strings. Um, the first generation got the back door, but once those started infecting other computers, the back door didn't go with it, just the original component did. Now you um, have pled guilty. Yes. And as of we, as of the time that we taped the show, you haven't been sentenced as of yet. Yeah. Why is it that you're talking? Um, well, I just really want people to understand that 
for one, the the blaster part, I feel I feel guilty, and I want people to understand that I I just want them to understand that I'm sorry for what I did. I guess I can't think of a better word, but you know I I feel bad that Microsoft had to do so much work to cover what I did, and I feel bad that people at home had to get rid of it and didn't know how. And so they, they ended up having to spend money, and I was not trying to do that. Well, you became rather known around the world even. Uh, yeah. We have an article from the BBC News, the UK uh, edition. Uh, the headline was, a surprise, suspect was surprised by the effect of the net virus. They were actually talking about you. and. Actually, you were surprised at how much impact it had. I was very surprised. What kind surprised. of impact did you think it was going to have? Um, well, originally, I didn't think it was going to do anything. Um, I didn't do much like, investigation as to how it worked. So by modifying it, I was really just trying. Like I didn't expect it to really do anything. So when I found out that it had spread pretty much all over the world, I was extremely surprised. How far along in school were you at the time that you did at this? At the time, it was in between my junior and, and senior year. Of high school? Of high school, yeah. Are, are you a computer genius? No, are by you, far, no. Are you a genius of any kind? No, I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, you described yourself a little bit as a typical teen, if, in, yeah. if indeed there is such a thing. Uh, but um, were other teens working with their computers in the same way as you without, I'm not asking you if any of them were creating variants. Yeah. Um, my, my personal friends know. A lot of my friends didn't know computers very well. Of people that I talked to on the internet, some being of my age, they were. But I would probably say no, probably not. Okay. I'm gonna hold up a, a document that actually has your name on it. Yes. And it's the United States of America versus Jeffrey Lee Parson. It's a yeah. warrant for your arrest. Tell us about the day that this was delivered to you. Well, um, it, it was a weird day because it was about 5 o'clock in the morning and my dad had woken me up. And he saw on the news that I was going to be arrested, actually. And it came out of the blue. I knew about two hours ahead of time, so I, I was able to, to kind of wake up a little bit. They arrested me at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I don't know, for a typical teen, as you say, seven's extremely early. <laughs> so I, I was kind of groggy at the time. And the, the FBI and Secret Service were extremely nice, actually. They were just pretty nice. <laughs> they were nice, but they, they were they asking were the, you pointed questions. Uh, well, actually, the day that I got arrested was completely different than the day that I originally got, like, the search warrant. Oh. It was about two weeks apart, actually. Oh, I see. So let's then go to the search warrant day. Okay. And that particular day was the day that they swooped into your yeah. house. Actually, that day, uh, my friend was about to go off to college the next day. So we were actually at a place called Valley Fair, which is like an amusement park. Mm -hmm. So we were on our way home. And we were dropping off a friend at her house, and then cars pulled up and uh, just like told us to get back in the car. And we drove to my house, and there's just a bunch of people in my house. And they questioned all my friends, my parents, everything, and took all the like computer equipment out of my house and everything. And they were there for like seven, eight hours, just grilling me, grilling everybody and taking everything. There's an article in the Wired News. Of course, Wired is uh, one of the most popular of the uh, publications uh, in the new age. Yeah. And the headline was, Blaster Suspect, a Typical Teen. And we've used that. And yeah. uh, there was a quote from one of your friends uh, saying, he and Parson like to shoot billiards, rent movies, play video games, and just sit around and joke like other kids. Um, what's it like going from sitting around joking, playing pool, Mm -hmm. to looking at a federal prison sentence? Oh, extremely scary, actually. Um, it's kind of like I went from being a high school teenager to having to be like a 30-year-old adult. Because 
once you realize you have a felon on your record or a felony on your record, you, you have to look at things differently. You have to look at, you know, what kind of jobs can I get? You know, I can't go to college. What kind of jobs can I get without college experience right now? So it's it's kind of just like being jumped to the future, like 15 years. What were your plans when you were a, a junior in high school, let's say? Well, I planned to at least do some sort of two-year technical college, um, more than likely a computer career. And I pretty much planned on just living my life, getting a, a good job while I was going to college, pay for my college, get out, get a decent job, and, and work my way up like a typical computer job. I mean, start from the bottom, work to the top. Well, we've got a picture of a computer, and we've got the computer code on it, and we've got the question, typical teen or federal felon. And what is the appeal of the computer? What is the appeal of the internet? What was it that was so engrossing for you? Um, what I really liked about computers and the internet is just that there's infinite knowledge. It, computers are always changing, there's always new technology, and on the internet, you can find pretty much anything. And I just liked all the information you can get and how technology changed all the time. The sharing of files yep. for free. Yeah. That's kind of a normal thing, wasn't it, at the time? Um, it seemed like it, yeah. It seemed like everybody I talked to had downloaded music at least, at the very least music. So. And did it seem like a criminal act to you, or did you know it was wrong? Do you know you were stealing something? Um, you, you know, it's you know it's wrong. You know that somebody somewhere is losing money over it, but you don't think about it. It's just not. You don't think that far ahead. You think of it as just it's a file on a computer. We have a representative example of what some people would receive when they would get the, the blaster worm A, sometimes the blaster B, other things, the love sand. Um, did you, I mean, when this was happening, when the variant that you created was spreading, uh, did you do anything to stop it? Um, to stop it, no. Um, I don't even think there really is anything you can do to stop it. And at the time, I wasn't even at my house. Um, what happened is I had done the modifying and sent it out. And then I went to visit my brother for a week in Upper Michigan where he doesn't even have a computer. Well, he does now, but he didn't at the time. And I got the search warrant two days after I got home. And in that time, it was pretty much I got home, visited my friend who was leaving to college, and then search warrant happened. Hmm. The, uh, the existence of viruses. Well, first, we're going to take a real short little break. Just want to remind everyone that we're, this is an, an extraordinary time that we have. Uh, Jeffrey Parson, at the time of this interview, uh, is uh, awaiting sentencing for a uh, federal crime relating to the uh, uh, involvement with uh, viruses, computer viruses of 2003. And Jeffrey has come on to talk about it to mainly encourage people who might even be considering it not to do it because there's really bad repercussions. Uh, if you want to learn more about viruses, all you have to do is just go to Google and type in computer virus and then there will come up millions of hits and you can learn more that way. But Jeffrey, let's go back to you. Uh, at the time, Information Week was another one of those publications similar to Wired and one of their uh, writers, Bob Evans, uh, the headline on the article from uh, September of 2003 was business technology, don't turn that cheek to hackers, be unchic. And he says this, this new hobby espoused by a growing number of highly dangerous punks is on the verge of gaining celebrity status within segments of our sometimes warped culture. Are you a dangerous punk? Uh, I don't believe so, no. Um, Nothing I did was to be malicious in, in any way. Um, if I would have known or, or thought about it ahead of time, I really wouldn't have done what I did. And at the time, I, I just wasn't thinking. You know, you don't think ahead of time and you don't think of consequences at the time. And I, I, and, and I think I was just a kid at the time. Um, I, I don't, definitely didn't want to be thought of, of like a celebrity or trying to gain any type of like notoriety or anything. Yeah. 
Well, Evans goes on to say this, again, from Information Week of two, September the 8th, 2003. He says, I can just see Katie Couric or Larry King gushing over Jeffrey Parson, nudging his traumatized psyche forward so he can bear his pain so that we, too, can share in his struggle against the awful forces that made him do it, and so we can shed a tear for him as we empathize with him, his victimhood. Are you a victim here? I don't believe that either, no. Um, I believe I did what I did. I believe that, you know, there's consequences to every action you make, and I have to, you know, pay for what I did. And I'm, I'm doing that, really. So I don't want anybody to consider me a victim either. Um, you know, it's, it's my fault I'm in this position. So, you know, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, in August of 2004, a Seattle Times article says, Blaster Internet Worm Defendant 19 pleads guilty. Yeah. Um, and the U.S. attorney at the time said he had a consistent and malicious attitude toward people and companies. Uh, that's not true either. Um, like I said, I wasn't trying to hurt anybody or any company. And I really do feel sorry for all the damage caused by everything I've done, um, not just Blaster. And I, just, I want people to know that, too. Besides sharing files, or the ability to share files, rightly or wrongly, is there anything else you were trying to do with the creation of the variant? Um, actually, no. The, the, uh, the attack that it had against Microsoft was part of the original, and I didn't know that was actually in there. And so the part that I had in the attack against Microsoft was my fault in the way that I didn't stop it. But again, I didn't create that on purpose, and it was already in there. So. One of the, um, well, some of the articles that were written about you and about the time is mm -hmm. that um, you certainly didn't try to cover your tracks because, in yeah. fact, the identifying website came back to you. Yeah. Um, some people would say, some teens probably would say, why not? Why didn't you try to cover it? Um, again, it goes back to I did not think it was going to work. Um, from the original information I got, and if it worked the way that I thought it did, it wouldn't, shouldn't have worked. And I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I didn't cover my tracks for that reason alone. Is if it worked, I didn't expect it to. And if it did, I didn't expect it to go far. So there was really no reason to cover anything. Got to go to this next picture. Earlier before, we showed a picture of your hometown of Hopkins, yeah. Minnesota. This could be a place where you're going to be soon. Um, what, how does it make you feel? I'm extremely scared. Um, it's it's kind of like, eventually you have to move out, right? You, you move out of your parents' house, but having to move out of your parents' house directly into a prison cell is not something you want to do, and it's not something you should have to. But again, I look at it as, I did something wrong, I have to pay for it. And if that's what I'm looking at as a prison cell, that's what I'm going to have to do. So I've got the mindset of, it's my fault. Okay, let's say for three years that you're in okay. that prison cell. Have you thought of what you can do for yourself while you're there? Um, I've thought a little bit. I know that the place where I'd be going has some sort of classes, and most, most prisons have libraries. And I, I plan on spending a lot of time trying to learn things besides computers, because I don't think I want to go into the computer field anymore. So I've pretty much came up with, I'm going to try and learn something, another trade that I can use in life. Hey, you graduate from high school, right? Yes. Um, you're a pretty smart kid? I, I, yeah, pretty smart. <laughs> Just not smart on everything, huh? Yeah. Well, one of the things I've, that I found curious in, in all of the research that I did with regard to the show was an interview that you did with the Today Show yeah. really early on. Yeah. It's actually from September of 2003, just mm -hmm. several weeks after you were, uh, after the, the FBI came to visit you. Yeah. And the headline on the, uh, on the interview says, I'm not the one they need to get. Yeah. And there's a quote from you. 
I am extremely concerned that the government is trying to make an example of me. I understand that the government needs to catch someone for these crimes, but I'm not the one they need to get. What did you mean? What I mean is that the original creator is not me. And I understand, and I understood at the time, that I did something wrong and I need to pay for it. But according to most of America and most of the people like talking out against me, they're trying to make me pay for the original. And the, the crime that I committed is what I should have to pay for, but people want me to pay for anything that's gone wrong with their computer. And just anything and everything, they want me to pay for it, just because I'm the only one caught. So. Um, do, you, do you think that you are being made an example of? Um, in a way, yes. Um, I think it's, it's kind of like I'm paying for what I did and part of something else, and I don't know what that other part is. And I'm pretty much saying that by making an example of me, which I do believe they're doing, is, is not right. And I don't know. I don't even know where I was going with that. Now you grew up in Hopkins, Minnesota. Yeah. That's where you created the variant. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to Washington State before? No. Why are you here being tried? Um, that I'm not even sure of. Um, we tried to get it moved to my home state, Minnesota, and I think we tried twice, actually, and I have no idea why it's even here. As far as I know, it's in Washington because of Microsoft, and that's the only reason alone as I can think. So is it your understanding that Microsoft is the one that has suffered the most damage here? Yes. Have you had a chance to talk with your friends, the ones who you were a typical teen with? How have, what's there been, there been their reaction to what all has happened to you? Um, a lot of them were surprised. Um, they, I think they're more scared for me, and I think they're scared that they aren't gonna see me again, because by the time I get out of wherever I'm going, they're going to be, you know, mid 20s, living on their own with maybe a husband or a wife or maybe a kid, and I won't have any of that. And I'll be probably moving back to my hometown and have to start all that late. Um, have you lost friends over this? Uh, over this, no. And I think I've gained a few, actually. <laughs> now, a lot of people my age would say, where have your parents been in all of this? Yeah. Um, my parents are trying to be as supportive as they can, as supportive as they can. But when this all began, I was extremely reliant on my parents, and this whole thing has taught me that I can't rely on them for everything, because they can't just take this away. You know, I'm an adult. I'm an adult. It's mine. They can't just take it for me. Yeah. Well. Jeffrey, from my my eye, eye my eyes, I see you as a kid. So, um, and I can understand where they're coming from as parents, as they're wanting to do everything that they can to protect you. Yeah. But you are right. It's um, it's yours that you have to deal with at this point. Yeah. How are they dealing with it, though? Um, well, they're they're trying to not interfere because they can't do anything, and when they try to, it's just they can't. And uh, so I, I pretty much think that they're trying to be supportive and that they just kind of have to live their life while trying to be supportive. Now, if you had your opportunity to talk with a teen who was 12 or 13 years old, mm -hmm. who was engrossed in, in his computer, a uh, young, young male, engrossed in his computer, loved searching the internet, loved downloading music, loved mm -hmm. downloading everything that he possibly could, what would you tell him? Um, well, I'd say it's fine to be engrossed on a, on a computer because computers are becoming the next like all-around device. You can talk to people, you can pretty much do anything. But I would say as far as downloading, you know, stay to what's legal because, you know, when you're downloading music, 
you're taking money away from people. When you're downloading games, you're taking money away from people. And that ultimately hurts the economy, and it takes away jobs and, and ultimately money. What is it that you think you can say, or what is it that you think you can do to help prevent others from getting in the same trap that you got in? Well, I think that's one of the reasons I'm doing the show. and. Uh, it's basically I want people to see what's going on. I mean, my life over the last year and a half has been just at a standstill, and I don't want people to have to go through this. So I think by seeing what I'm going through will help. And I think, I, I hope that they can see it and stop. I have a 24-year-old son, and he smokes or has smoked. And I've talked with him until I'm blue in the face. Mm -hmm. And then I've shown him television ads that, that are supposedly made by people his age, and he says, that won't work. And so I've asked him, what will work? So I'm asking you, what will work to get a teen to stop doing something illegal on the Internet? Um, um, that's, that's one of the, the harder questions, and uh, that I don't know. Um, I'm hoping, again, that people will see what I'm going through, and I'm hoping this works. And I have no idea what... It's going to get people to stop, and I think the easiest way is just to show people what happens, and this is what happens. Let's look 10 years down the road. Okay. You're 29 years old. You haven't reached that magic 30 yet. What's Jeffrey Parson, what's life going to be for you? Well, I hope to be living a somewhat normal life at the time. Um, I hope to have a really good job and I hope to be married, and I hope to be living in a permanent place by like owning my own house. And I just hope to be back to normal. It's pretty much up to you, isn't it? Yeah. You got some pretty broad shoulders for such a young man. Well, Jeffrey, thank you very much for coming on the show. You're you. a very brave young man. Um, and not a whole lot of people on this earth take responsibility for what they did. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. I just wanted to remind everyone, that has been Jeffrey Lee Parson. And is he a typical teen? Well, we all know teens. And maybe, yeah, he, he was a typical teen who went a little bit too far with his computer. And as he did that, he got into things that were illegal, and now he's coming out and admitting it. And so hopefully, if you're a teen that's watching the show, take Jeffrey's example, listen to what he has to say. We'll see you on Public Exposure next week.